The Workarama podcast is about embracing and celebrating new ways of working. The world has shifted considerably in the way we work. Thousands of people have now been set up to work from home, and this happened very quickly. Workarama is a podcast of conversations, ideas, and personal experiences to show businesses and individuals how they can make these changes in a more permanent way, and how to ensure that both employers and employees can thrive in this new way of working. In this episode, we're going to speak to Dale Muffet. Dale is a sales executive in the charity sector uh, for a company called Formnauts. I think I've got that right. Um, and I want to speak to Dale because he was already work- working remotely from his team and um, he was already a user of a co-working space. So I was keen to get his insights really on how it worked for him in the past um, and his thoughts on returning to co-working in the future. Let's see what he's got to say. So, Dale, hi. Good to see you. Hi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. This is uh, going to be really, really useful, I think, not just for, for Workarama, for the event, but for just for for all of us really to get an insight into what's actually going on uh, on on an individual level. So uh, I was really sort of keen to talk to you. Um, And uh, you bring in your your lovely dog, Pumpkin, who I'm missing terribly. Um, Yeah, I think she's missing the office too. (laughs) Yeah, it it is such a shame. And she's a... um, She's a gentle soul, isn't she? And she was just starting to get used to us because she'd just been there just a few months. And uh, and unfortunately, if if we ever get back to being in the office, we're going to have to go through that process again, aren't we? Yeah, probably. She is quite uh, shy and timid at times mm. until until she becomes a real pain. Then uh, yeah. <laughs> flicks a switch. Oh, she's gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. And also in our space, we've got uh, three dogs. So although I'm not a dog owner, I do feel like one um, at times, and uh, I, I, and I just love that about it. Um, Just so that we all know, uh, just for future reference, where we're at, um, I think it's important to say that this is uh, currently mid-May. We're 14th, 15th of May, something like that, um, 2020, uh, the year the world went mad. Um, And the government have just started to ease things just a wee bit, haven't they? Um, They've basically said that um, if you can work from home, you still should, but if you can't, then you should go in. I think that's pretty much a, a decent summary. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I finally get to see one friend soon. So, <laughs> Sorry so about how that. have you done that? Well, uh, we, we, we've got a, a walk planned on Monday because we've got a day off. So we're going to do a socially distant walk around Portsmouth. <laughs> It'll be the first time I've seen a friend in like six, seven weeks or something. So. Mm. It's Weird. hard, isn't it? It really yeah. is hard. It's all very, very strange. So, uh, Dale, uh, t- tell us um, who you work for and what you do for them, can you? Yeah, so I work for a company called Formunauts. Uh, it's a bit of a weird name, but it's because they're an Austrian company. Uh, so we work in a face-to-face fundraising. So you see the guys who um, stand down the street or go door to door and try and sign you up for a charity regular giving gift. Uh, We provide the software on the tablet. So we work across all of Europe. We've got some clients in Latin America. And I actually do sales and growth in the business. So I'm their only operative in the UK. Um, But I do international and UK sales trying to grow the business from where it is at the moment to sort of get us really on the world stage. Mm-hmm. So um, ha- how's the business doing? I mean, the charity sector is, is, is struggling. Well, like many, many sectors obviously are struggling. You know, how, how are you doing? So um, right now we're quite optimistic. I think we've gone for a little bit of a, like a roller coaster. <laughs> Um, at the start, we were quite optimistic because face-to-face fundraising is quite a resilient industry. So we knew that even when lockdown ends, we would definitely be back in business. Um, currently in the UK, well over a million people are signed up every year and yeah. across Europe as well, obviously millions of people. And it's a huge source of revenue for the charities. Um, so it, it was always going to stay. Um, and 
um, but sort of right as we got about two, three weeks in, when I think it really people really started to understand what what was happening, things had really ground to a halt. Uh, we had quite a few deals fall through, uh, so I had a number of deals that were very close to contract signed uh, and then fell through right at the last minute. So that was quite frustrating. Mm. Then that was sort of a bit of a low point, and then. Um, as we've sort of gone through it again, we've come to a point where we've had to develop a new solution because you always used to get very close to the fundraiser and donor and they would sign on the tablet using their finger, which almost seems like a horror so this story. Is physically, this is physically in the street, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. in the street, you have your tablet and, and you sign with a finger on the tablet, which, which I think no one would want to do anymore. Um, mm. So we, we've just developed a new solution where it's like a two-stage, so we now send it to the donor's phone to complete. Uh, but that's really give, given us a renewed sense of hope because there's lots of charities um, who are on systems that can't do that, and there's lots of charities that are still using paper in certain parts of Eastern Europe. So we're going to lots of these people now, and there's lots of completely new, new business opportunities that we didn't have a month ago now. Um, so again, it's, it's sort of really picking up again, and hopefully over the next two weeks we'll see some of this come come to fruition and actually get some new deals in, in places we really didn't expect it. Wow. So there's, there's good stuff come out of it. Do you think that you would, would have um, looked at developing this anyway eventually or has this really made you all just completely, um, you know, blue sky thinking? To be honest with you, it was on our roadmap for this year. Um, so we were going to develop it later this year anyway. Um, so we, we sort of knew we wanted to do it, but sort of the need suddenly became quite urgent. So we wanted to do it because it was a nice way to do the face-to-face and we knew the results would be really good. But now we've been forced into it and one of, one of our competitors has done it as well. So we know it's, it's the right decision to have built this. Um, but we're seeing so some of our clients went back to work last week in Austria and Germany and we're sort of seeing the numbers of sign-ups going up slowly day by day. So it's, it's exciting to see that things are happening again. Um, so it'd just be interesting to see when the UK can go back to normal because I think we're a, a few weeks behind yet before being able to go back out. Yeah, we are a few weeks behind, but I think it's it's good 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 to be in that position in in, in a way, isn't it? That we can see uh, light at the end of the tunnel yeah. elsewhere. Um, I think that's really, really interesting. So you said you had um, uh, a bit of a low point. I know uh, b- because uh, because of our co-working space, where we've sort of caught up on, on, on Zoom sort of one, once a week, once a fortnight-ish, just sort of checking yeah. on each other, see how we're doing. I remember, I remember <laughs> the day that you weren't very happy. Um, have you had other moments or is, is that been, been your main uh, one? I think that was the real low one just before Easter. I think I just, a couple of deals had fallen through on the Wednesday and then Thursday morning I got up, sat at my computer and went, no, (laughs) I just just didn't really do much for the rest of the day and just took a day, I think, for my own mental health, really. Uh, I think that's important to sometimes accept that you need to take some time for yourself. You know, it's important to always keep going and to keep trying, especially in sales, you've always got to keep going, keep going, keep going, even when it really feels like you've got nothing going on. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes it's important as well just to go, no, actually, I just need to walk away and then come back in a few days refreshed, ready to go. And I think that helped a lot. And then yeah, I think because I've been able to throw myself into this new feature and uh, because now everyone's talking about, oh, how do we go back? Um, so I'm talking to lots of people in the UK that aren't our clients and, and some of them probably won't be in the future. Won't be going back? Well, no, but won't be our clients in the future. But there's still right. that sense of community in the industry where we discuss ideas, share stuff because everyone's coming to me for thoughts because our clients are going back in Austria, Germany. So... Yeah, it's, that's given me sort of a renewed sense of purpose and the motivation to sort of keep going on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah no, that's brilliant. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think you do need time out. I think mm. as we discussed before, I, um, I I seem to go in a two-weekly cycle where um, I'm fine for two weeks. In fact, even at the beginning, I was almost, I don't know, happier than normal for some reason. I can't explain it at all. Um, and then every two weeks, I have to just 
spend an evening on the sofa with a very large bottle of wine and uh, and lots yeah. of tears. And the next day I'm fine. It's very strange. Yeah, I, I mean, even I think with sales, it always goes up and down with how busy you are anyway. And, and this week, um, off the back of two very busy weeks, this week felt very slow. And I think I've had to sit back and remind myself a couple of times that just actually just enjoy the slower week because the the busier weeks will come again and don't see it as a problem just see it as stuff's happening in the background that you're not aware of and and just try and take that time so yeah this week has been a bit slower but I've I've really tried to not let it affect me too much and just kind of get on with it yeah yeah good for you Um, and what what I'm really interested in is uh, the, the business model that you work under so as you say you're you're the only operative in the UK and the uh, company's based in Austria is it yes um so so before all all of this sort of happened how did that work how did what was your relationship with them are you the only person that works in the way that you do what what was their operational model in terms of their Um, needs so in total, we have 17 people that work for us now. Um, and it's split between uh, full-time employees and contractors. So um, three of the developers are contractors because developers love to work as a self-employed way. And two of them work in Vienna. Uh, actually, you know, four are contractors. So two work in Vienna one works between Zagreb in Croatia and Vienna, and one, he, though he's Austrian, he just lives in, in Athens. So he, he just wanted to live in the sun, so I can't really blame him. Yeah. And then I'm the, other, I'm the other only contractor, really. So I'm a self-employed uh, contractor for the company uh, based in the UK. Um, so generally speaking, um, it's, it's that mix of employed and self-employed. So we were quite used to this way of working and working from home. But what was really interesting, so as I'm the only person in the UK, I've always worked from home for the last year that I've worked for them. So for me, this is no real change. Uh, but what was interesting for the business was um, they have always sort of wanted people to be in the office and I think our CEO at the start was like, oh, my God, I don't really want people working from home. Are people going to work from home? And I remember in our first team meeting, maybe a week and a half into the lockdown uh, from Vienna's side, so they, they went into lockdown a bit before us, but he was like, I'm really so impressed with all of you. I didn't think this was going to work, but you're all still working really hard. And you know, I completely believe that home working works, so I never have any issue with it. Um, now, actually, our office has reopened in Vienna, so uh, we have a schedule of who's allowed to be in at what time, so there's less people in the office. Um, but pretty much everyone in Vienna is really quite happy to be spending two, two days a week in the office just to get back to that normal life and to feel like a team again. So I think we're always going to have this mix now of sort of home working when you need to and, and office working when you can. Mm, yeah, it's, it's interesting that um, it's, it's funny talking to you before. I would have thought I just got the impression, I guess, um, that your your management were were up for this sort of distributed model. But it was more just actually, it's the employees that were driving it by the sounds of it. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it just it wasn't some, it wasn't really think anyone really planned for or thought about as an option. I mean, the all our self employed guys obviously have the freedom to work from home whenever we want anyway. Um, so that was quite normal that a developer would just turn up at lunchtime or, or just, you know, do whatever. Um, but I think to have, I don't think many people in the other parts of the business, the employed side, really considered working from home too much unless they really needed to, which, which was kind of always fine, but not on a regular basis. And now, and now I think everyone's just seen how well it works. So they're like, well, actually, yeah, why not have a more of a mix than a one-sided thing? So it was never planned, but yeah, it's just kind of a way it's turned out, I guess. Mm. Mm. I think it's interesting now that, you know, a, a, a lot of employers are being very surprised at how much actually their employees <laughs> don't want to go back. <laughs> you know, so for you, I mean, you, you wouldn't have worked the way that you've worked thus far if, if, if it didn't work for you it clearly works for you working remotely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind it I quite like being in charge of my own day um you know if 
if I want to go walk the dog at 11 for an hour, I will. But it probably means that I've been up since half seven, eight working anyway. So it's not like you're doing less hours. You're just doing them when you want to. And I think that makes you a lot more productive because I don't necessarily think starting from nine, finishing at five is, is the best way to do it. I think if you've got that flexibility in your day to do whatever, um, then that's really more comfortable. And, and I've had a lot of people that I've spoken to. Um, so one big charity in the UK, I called up my, the person I speak to there and he was like, oh yeah, I, I started at eight, at nine, I went to the local farm shop down the road, um, picked up some groceries, came back and was like, I never would have done that if I was working from the office. He says, I love it, just that little bit of flexibility in my day. It just It's just whole changed the whole way you work. Um, but it works. It's yeah, fine. it's well, it's, it's integrating work and life again, isn't it? We don't have work life balance anymore. I think that sort of term is going to have to be thrown out the window. It's sort of work life integration, but in in a balanced way. It's a just yeah. way of looking at it. Um, so, yeah, sure. um, when did you move into the co working space? When was that? Uh, January. January, okay. Yeah. And so there was obviously a, a reason for that. You know, um, you obviously decided that um, a, a co working space was for you. What was the motivation behind that? Um, so, working from home last year, so June to the end of the year, I was at home on my own. Well, Pumpkin was here but she's not the best conversationalist. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, so, <laughs> so I think it was just a little bit of boredom and then feeling like my production was going down. So I think it was just wanting to actually be working around someone else. And and, and that's what I really noticed when I went moved into the, the office space, that even if I wasn't there, a full day, I'd get loads more done in that day just because having someone else around you actually made you work. It's almost like you were worried they were watching that you weren't working. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously... Keeping an eye on you. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it was just helped me focus. And it was also something that um, my bosses in, in Vienna thought would be a good idea as well. So we actually came to the table with the discussion at the same time, I said, I think I'm going to get a co-working space. And I was like, oh, that's good, because we were just about to say you should probably get a co-working space. Um, so, yeah, that's quite interesting. And they, they funded it for you as well, haven't they? They have, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they just felt it would be good to give me a space to go work in, yeah. Yeah. So um, has it been since you've been back home? I mean, I guess, I don't know, has, you, has your productivity been affected again? Or something um, along the lines of what I've heard from a couple of people, it's almost like because everybody's doing it at the moment, it doesn't feel quite so 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 wrong, so lonely. And yeah, I think it's really helped because Rachel, my partner, is also working from home. So we've taken over the front room. We've got a both sit at the, the dining room table and work. Um, though I'd say I probably work more than she does. <laughs> <laughs> um, just just having someone else here to talk to and you know creating a bit of an office space has made it. I don't feel like I've gone back to what it was last year. Uh, does still feel like I've got a bit more of a working space than uh, just working in my house kind of thing. Yeah, and has she got plans to remain at home, or or just has she so, yeah? So her company uh, came out, I think one of her CEOs or COOs came out last week and said, we're expecting um, non-essential workers in the office to be working from home at least until the end of the year. And my gut says that'll probably be till June next year, maybe, maybe a full year, right. just because of what's happening. So basically they've got a call centre and to be able to maintain social distancing in, in their office means that the call centre that was now a quarter of the building is going to be the whole building. So everyone else who's working there is going to have to work from home because they can. Uh, whereas the call centre would be, obviously make sense to have that back in the office as soon as possible. Mm. So maybe they'll start doing that thing where you have like one or two days a week in the office and you've got like a rotor, or even half days, I don't know. I think certainly that, and this is quite interesting because they were a company who were totally against working from home before. Mm. So they have 
completely done a, a 180 and said that actually no you're probably not coming back in until end of the year next year so. mm. yeah I, 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 I've seen that a lot it is quite amazing yeah. that you know we, we all sort of think that that sort of uh, transitional change is so much easier we do it gently and over time and all that kind of stuff but you know we just had transformational bang change yeah. uh, and in actual fact I think it's it's done us good you know we, we've realised that we can do it and, and all of the objectives that, that we had have, have just sort of gone really because we've had to yeah yeah I think that's that's really interesting I mean before this I mean you had companies like Virgin who were always yeah work from home decide your own holiday all this stuff and uh, there's lots of companies out there like it and I think I've always wanted to work in that way for probably the last three four years but have not really been able to until last year when I went self-employed and then it's completely up to me what I do um but I think, yeah, we've really proven in this time how easy it is to, to work this way. And actually by giving people more control and more respect over their own lives, you actually get a better result. It's, people are still working. Um, and I think in a, in a heartbeat, we've annihilated that whole idea that oh, people won't work at home. People, I mean, people still want to work. People still want to do their job. Of course, some people will abuse it, but that's, you know, there's plenty of people who go to the office and sit scrolling Facebook all day you know it's not it's not yeah. like those people are going to change yeah. uh, so I think it's, it's really positive to see you know maybe we get a better work-life balance that kind of thing I mean I, I actually one interesting fact on work-life balance is I read yesterday in Japan suicide rates have dropped down massively because people are now balancing and taking the stress away from working 18 hour days you know like from home, taking time for themselves. So obviously that's the extreme. Yeah. I've never quite been there in the UK, but I think that it's that work-life balance that this is kind of resetting. Um, it be quite interesting. I wonder if this may lead us to the four-day working week. <laughs> interesting, yeah. Because definitely. that's been floated for the last year in different ways. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just turn the entire thing on its head. It is very, mm. very interesting. The other thing that I wanted to ask you about um, uh, is your sort of, your thoughts and your your plans for returning to co-working. Just so that everybody knows, um, I'm, I'm not really sort of <laughs> mugging Dale with questions here that I haven't already asked him um, uh, and putting you on the spot. But I think as a, as a co-working uh, provider, owner, whatever you want to call us, I think it's important that we that we all look at the reality uh, of, of how our co-workers are feeling. And uh, there's absolutely no point as kidding ourselves that everything's going to go back. Um, I don't think it is. Um, we are going to have to operate differently, this, the same as any organisation. Um, so I'm just interested to know sort of how you feel uh, about coming back into a, a co-working space what your concerns would be uh, um, about going back and what any space, whether it be ours or any, any, any other, um, could do to make you feel comfortable doing it? Yeah, I, I, think it's, um, I think that's a really tough one at the moment. I think it's clear that this virus, I wouldn't say it's under control at the moment. And, and I would say that I can't until... You know, I think until there's a vaccine and we've got some sort of high level of immunity towards it in the country, I don't see life really returning to, to normal as such. Um, but I think, I mean, I would love to go back to the co-working space, um, but it's hard to justify when that's just, when I can, when I can comfortably work from home, it's hard to sort of justify wanting to go to the working space over safety of other people. And I think that that's honestly what it comes down to. So do I want to go back? Yes. Will I go back while the virus is still floating around? Probably not. Maybe, maybe part time. But it just seems, you know, even if you take all possible steps, you've got barriers up or, you know, you've got like alcohol gel everywhere and people washing their hands. I mean, there's still, we obviously got four people in our office and then you've got everyone else in the building. If you take one person out of that and, and they're not a potential spreader, you know, I mean, I still have to go shopping. I still have to go out in the world and other places. So taking out those point contact points is just helping protect everyone, isn't it? So 
as much as I want to go back and, and definitely one day I will and hopefully that won't be too long I think whilst whilst the virus is strong and we, and we can't say how easy it is to stop the spread I don't think I can say I would like to go back Mm. No, I, I, I think I agree with you um, very reluctantly. Um, yeah. I, I think, you know, whilst ever we can do whatever we can all do to, to just keep that, those transmission rates down as much as possible, mm. then, then, you know, that's, that's the, the right and the decent thing to do. Um, yeah. You know, we've got enough space in here. We, you know, we, we could social distance uh, in this space. And yet still, as you say, it isn't just this space. You know, you've got to get to the space. You've got to move within the space. Mm. You once you hear your film, perhaps like you're going to go to the shops across the road for your lunch, and and it just starts to escalate, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's just simple things like going to fill the kettle up, <laughs> you know, touching the doors as you come in and out of the building, buttons on the lifts. It's you, you sort of until you really think about it, you don't realise quite how many potential contact points there are, and I think. You know, uh, in my lifetime, I've never seen a disease like this spread so fast and so undetected. Mm. You know, how do you prevent that? And ultimately, at the moment, the only real way is is the social distancing. And I think, you know, I really want to go see my family and I really want to see my friends. And that that's not going to happen. We can't release everywhere. So maybe if we can control it in the workplace, we can then maybe go see our loved ones. And actually, you know, that's the kind of benefit we'll get if we can reduce contact elsewhere. Yeah, like yeah, I'm, yeah I'm you're right. Fan, Sorry, I missed I that bit. I'm a massive football fan, uh, but I don't think I'm going to be going to any football games for another year. <laughs> You know, so. Yeah, it's prioritising those those contact points, isn't it? And maybe mm. uh, maybe work um, isn't or shouldn't be a, a priority. Um, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. And it's that balance, isn't it? I mean, if you can work and you can still do your job 80% or 90% effectively at home, mm. maybe it makes sense for that. That's the best place for you to be at the moment. Yeah. You know, that's not, you know, like, people will want to go back to the office. People like the community. People, like I really enjoyed, like the friendships I was making with, with you, Carolyn and Kat. And, you know, having the dogs in the office was really nice and fun. And it was a really, really nice place to work. But until the rest of life goes back to normal. It's hard to justify being able to do it. Yeah, sadly, I agree. Unfortunately, yeah. I do. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, look, Dale, um, I've taken enough of your time. That has been really, really, really useful. Thank you so much. No problem at all. It's um, nice to catch And um, keep in touch. And uh, yeah. hopefully we'll see, well, stay safe. And uh, hopefully yeah, we'll you see too. yourself in the lovely pumpkin very soon. Yeah, hopefully. Maybe we can do a social distancing walk or something. Or something. We should do that. Yeah. We do that. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, Take Jill. Care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was the lovely Dale. Sadly, we didn't get to see the lovely pumpkin, his dog, my co-worker. Um, but hopefully we'll all see them both very soon. Um, I think it was really interesting getting some insights into somebody that normally works remotely and, and, and what they plan to do in the future and, and, and their fears, I guess, about coming back into the workplace and uh, whether it's really a sensible thing to do at the moment. Unfortunately, I, I tend to agree with them. Um, funny, Dale and I did actually continue talking for a while afterwards and uh, and he said that he, he really felt found it quite therapeutic talking about it. I think we're all in a position where I know everybody's talking about it, but to actually just to be able to sit and get your own insights um, out there for a while, I think actually is a really good thing to do. So, um, and that's what we're finding with, with what many people say, just having that ability to be able to talk. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you soon.